which is really a country which is a one health champion in the world. I think there are so many things already going on on one health, and, and I think that actually made our work here already a lot easier. But working for, for the four-way linking is thinking about bringing both sectors together, so both public health and animal health, but also epidemiologists and laboratory people to better understand risks for spread or incursions or spillovers of zoonotic pathogens into humans and to see like how can we put this in a framework so that you can at country level really benefit from the One Health concept that you're all, uh, actually already practicing. So the workshop is actually the second phase of, of, our, of our project. So the first one was this review mission which we did in April of this year where uh, people from FAO, myself, Chris Morrissey from OIE, and Jeff Gilbert for WHO, we came and we visited some of you, maybe not all, but some of you have seen us, where we looked at how is everything, for avian influenza, we used avian influenza as, as a model, how are you gathering data, how do you share information, what do you all do, how do you talk with your counterparts, and we tried to put that in, in, a, in a report. Four-way linking framework, which you'll hear about much more <laughs> over the next couple of days, will provide added value to Bangladesh in Bangladesh's cross-sectoral work <coughs> at the human-animal interface to reinforce and facilitate even more the collaboration among your agencies and among all of you. That's already evident from your participation here. We at WHO wish you an excellent three days, a productive <sighs> workshop, and success in your future work together. And remind you that, as always, we're here to support you. Thank you. We're going to make sure that the key laboratory and epidemiology groups, whether they're on the animal side or the human side, can, can work together, and to try and uh, really provide better tools to ensure that the policy people can actually manage the, the, the risks and threats that are posed. At that point, I declare this workshop open. So this is the, the matrix which we can use and we have a star which we can put somewhere here for the question what would happen the next six months, what's the risk for a human case in Bangladesh? Our risk question is what is the likelihood and impact of one or more MERS coronavirus infected camels entering Bangladesh from India for Eid 2015? Okay, our uh, first the likelihood is the low because uh, at present that India is not affected. Uh, uh, at present the India is not affected and the number of the camel import in Bangladesh is a very low uh, number and uh, what we know that the bordering state of Bangladesh have very little or nearly no camel population. Uh, that is why we are saying that it is the likely it is the low. And the scenario tells a story. We know the story, and you don't know the story. And the aim is for you to figure out what is happening. Okay. You need to think about the epidemiology that's going on, the virology that's going on, in the animal health sector and in the public health sector. Okay. The story takes account of all four sectors. All four sectors are important in the story. We will divide it up into two sections. So there'll be part of the story up to a certain point in time. In the first what we will do is that uh, you will get the information that was on the slides now. And also, you know, yesterday the Dhaka Tribune report or the newspaper clipping. There may be a little bit of information in there, so I have that one printed out for you as well, especially because it has a very funny picture of a goat on it as well. So we will get this to the groups because then you can read the newspaper for yourself. And uh, what will happen now is that, like we said, Chris will play animal health epidemiology. So if you have any questions for animal health epidemiology unit, you go to Chris, you knock at his door, 
You say, sir, can I come in and ask your question? I will be animal health laboratory, any type of laboratory, so CDIL, BLRI, I am director of everything. I will be in the back there. Public health epidemiology is played by LIS. So LIS will be public health epidemiology from ground floor up to the director, any question related to public health. Epi, ask LIS. Any question for public health laboratory, you ask Yoni. Don't try to share your results with the rest because this is kind of a competition, so don't, don't share with other groups at the moment or don't listen to them. So they may be wrong actually as well. So, and what will happen sometimes if there's two groups coming to me at the same time, I may say like, please, uh, my office is occupied and you'll have to wait for a minute until I'm finished with the others because you may know what's happened. What I don't want you to know what I'm saying to the others. So, and also remember, very important, one question at a time. If you come in my office and you ask me five questions, I will say, go back and come again with one question. Is that clear or are there any questions at yeah, this moment? Yeah, one, one question. The, excuse me. Yes. The girl died uh, because influenza like symptom you said or it is influenza? That's, you will have, that's one of the questions you know you have to ask somewhere. So ask yourself that question. Who suspected that that was influenza? Yes, so you have to ask yourself who can have this information? Where do I go and ask? You can come to me to the laboratory and I say I don't have this information. Okay. Go somewhere else. An investigation and uh, I have that information and I can give it to you. So, so do you have any... How many of the sick court contacts? I have the information. Okay, I can fine. give it to you. Okay, you can you. go back and read it. Okay, fine. If you thanks. need anything else, then you can go to somewhere else or come back to me. Okay, sure. Okay, and your group number three. was necessary to um, uh, contact the IHR focal point on the other side of the border to get more information <coughs> on the poultry and human situation <coughs> and also some sort of uh, assessment of the uh, this uh, poultry exchange in these two areas yes. some sort of assessment would be helpful uh, to control also if I would like to uh, raise two issues uh, one is the communication with the, so if, we co if I compare with the first group experience and with the second group experience. The first group experience is we all were the AP people. We were talking almost with the same language. So it was really easier for us to convince each other for kind of exploration or going to the, your office to collect the data. 
and also rationalize the issue, it was very easier for, uh, for uh, us on that time. But when the group has changed, then it is really sometimes difficult to have uh, using the same language and rational or convincing your partner or the group member who have different understanding of different language. That was the one thing I, I particularly felt during group work and I feel like that I was not able to have very strong communication skills to convince the other disciplinary group of people. That is the first part. The second part is the, there were some technical term in the lab, lab result, which I was not understand very well, but I talked to those group member, they explained it, what does it mean and how significant it is and how we can link with that result, like the clade, this result or the resistance result, how we can link with the exposure and how we can link with the conclusion. So I would like to say there is a both uh, good side and the, some of the barrier for being a multidisciplinary group. Create a national four-year linking trust force composed of representation from uh, four streams. Actually, the, what we do a uh, nomination of trust force members and director of IDCR, director of LRI, Livestock Research Institute, and head of epidemiology in at DLS will nominate this actually the trust force members. And uh, this will make by a joint discussion meeting. Um, two weeks after the date of receiving the workshop solution, this, after this meeting, today's meeting. So, um, and this documents, this task force uh, approved by uh, Director General of Health and Director General of DLS. And this will be a written, and the, we, we expecting this, we will get this approval after, the, that is the two weeks after this uh, formation of this group. Um, second solution, arranging joint training workshop ex exercise at regular intervals. Um, focal, particularly focal persons, uh, task force members and scientists will provide the training um, with the coordination of uh, task force. This training actually uh, will, um, will provide training as a uh, need basis. Um, and the workshop also are uh, conducted by uh, focal persons, task force, scientists, academicians, and um, uh, by the consultation with our coordination with task force, and uh, we are proposing every uh, this uh, workshop uh, in every six months. And some of the things has to go up to the uh, secretary level. Uh, some, some, not, not all. So we have to think of that also for practical purposes. If we really work, want to take it uh, forward, we have to start with something at our level and then finally we can take it up. Otherwise, it will be very difficult. Uh, it will be only the proposals, but nothing will come out of that. So we have to we do that. And some of the things we have to remember that what power we have at our level, we have to use that to go along with the work also, not to depend too much on the ministry because this four-way linking issue is not, not difficult to me uh, that we have to go for all decisions like that. These are nothing very much uh, complicated uh, things. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You have done a very good job. I think we can come to a very good conclusion. The recommendation, action plan, time frame, and who will do what. You have explained very well, but today, I would like to request you to make a move forward today, right today. As Professor Mahmoud Rahman has mentioned, some of the power that we enjoy already must be used if you really mean business, that it must start from today or tomorrow. If Professor Mahmoud Rahman or Mr. Kalidas says, yes, it can move from today from our own power, why not to start today? Right. Now, how am I, I'm not going to impose anything. For example, if we can really form a task force, and task force, basically the way we define, or we all define, is not a committee 
that needs to be approved by secretary. It's a very high, it is only a technical matter, and that thing can be done at technical level. And then only we can start working. Other things like steering committee. When you really create some evidence, produce some evidence that look, these things has already started to work, and we are getting a lot of benefit out of it, go for this thing. Then policymakers cannot deny you because the benefits are already in place. That is how we need to do work, particularly with the higher level. So I think all are agreeable. All the suggestions we can combine. There are some duplications, maybe language changes. That's what we will do from our you know, uh, our level. But what I would like to propose to you from your own suggestion there, today we will form a task force. At this moment? At this moment. No, let me, let me. Uh, I think uh, what we can do, we can propose. Yeah. I think you're just yeah, for me today. Okay. We can propose and then uh, from our side, I can say from our health side, uh, Director IDCR can take an approval from the DG and is formed from our side. So, and also same could be from the Department of Livestock. So like, uh, my, focus, my proposal is to not to form the task force right now. We have to discuss among ourselves. And then we'll formulate a task force later yeah, on. That's why I said propose. Yeah, yeah, that's what we will propose. <laughs> we will propose and how we are going to propose. For example, we know our epidemiology unit that is only one unit, and one person is heading that one. And that can be a one person for the four-way linking as a focal point. Similarly, we have a one central disease investigation lab, and that do liaise with all the human health side. We can pick up someone from there. And similarly, from his side, you know, that one institute works with both, and he can nominate two persons. These are the four person can be a task force approved by DZ as well as DZ DZHS. And that can be a form. And this is what we can recommend. I cannot make decision. Okay. You cannot make this decision. I, let, me, let me make it simple. Like uh, we can make a decision today that after this is finalized and this is circulated uh, to us, uh, to the, all the respective departments from FAO and WHO combinedly, because these are jointly done. We, we from our side can immediately propose the names to our DG and get it approved and, and also let uh, the DG livestock also know that we have nominated these two persons from our side. Same thing can happen also at the DG level there, at the DLS level. The epidemiology department can propose names and then that can be approved and let us know. That's all. That's what is Yeah, that's what task is for. Then other things we will go gradually with the help of the director generals and our involvement and FAO WHO will also push it to make it happen. Is it okay, Liz? Yes. Okay. Is okay. Now I think Professor Mahmoud Rahman.